Good morning and welcome to End of the Week Connection <laughs> on January, uh, which is Friday the 20th. 20th. Yes, you just told me that. Friday the January 20th and we are here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo, Texas. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we are going to do what we haven't done over the past couple weeks because I've been out of town and everyone's been busy, but we are going to read over our daily lectionary texts for today. Uh, and talk about it a little bit and see what the Lord might have for us. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we are grateful to you for being our God and our King. Uh, we are grateful to you for giving us your word that we might read it, uh, that we might know what you would have for us, um, and that uh, we can respond uh, faithfully through the work of your Holy Spirit. So I thank you again for this time and a chance to read your word. Uh, let it be with us uh, according to your will. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to start today with Psalm 130. I guess that's one of the fun things about doing it on a different day other than Wednesday is we're going to get to read a couple different psalms and see what goes from there. Uh, preemptive apology. Both Natalie and I seem to be dealing a little bit with uh, some stuffiness and things. It's probably just allergies, but uh, you know, West Texas wind and stuff. But uh, well, here we go. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew prophetic scripture today comes from Isaiah chapter 45, verses 18 through the end of the chapter. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it a chaos. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in chaos. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Assemble yourselves and come together. Draw near, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge, those who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn. From my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. All who were incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord, all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. 
and from the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling and singleness of heart, as you obey Christ, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Render service with enthusiasm as to the Lord and not to men and women, knowing that whatever good we do, we will receive the same again from the Lord, whether we are slaves or free. And masters, do the same to them. Stop threatening them, for you know that both of you have the same master in heaven, and with him there is no partiality. Our gospel lesson today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind see obey him and back to our psalm psalm 32 happy are those whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered happy are those to whom the lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit while i kept silence my body wasted away through my groaning all day long for day and night your hand was heavy upon me my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from troubles. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And our final psalm today is Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. 
How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me, those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So, anything jump out at you? I have a thought, but... <laughs> there's, there's a lot that jumps out at me, but I'd love to hear your thought first. Um, you know, it was interesting today. Um, the Was it the Isaiah passage that it mentions um, chaos? Mm -hmm. um, it speaks about chaos in Isaiah. And then in, um, in the Mark passage, it's the chaos of the water and in the fear that the disciples felt and um and they're shocked at who can control the wind but then when you look at the psalms and um today they are these these exultant psalms of praise and you created everything from the least to the greatest and and that was in that psalm 148 you know it's every everything you know from the rocks and the earth and the hills and the mountains the young the old the women the men, you know and of all things and then um, as you finish with Psalm 139 that, you know, is this well-known psalm, you know, that, you know, he formed you in the womb. And so it's this, I don't know, as, as I'm reading or as I'm listening, this idea that we so many times feel chaos or it feels like things are chaotic around us. And how can we, how can we put things back in order? But yet, he didn't create a world of chaos. He created it in order. And so even when we can't see that, his hand is at work there and he does ultimately have that control. And so, I don't know, maybe that just speaks to me because I wear, you know, the chaos of life. But it was just interesting that that was, you see that, you know, obviously it's throughout scripture, but the Psalms really, it's, it's ordered, it's intentional, it's all of those things. And even even with that in the in the chaos of things and, and things are so crazy. And I know that that Ephesians passage that I read is so hard sometimes. It's like, oh, I don't want to touch that. But I think that last line in that Ephesians is what is so important that we hear that we have the same master in heaven and there is no partiality. And in that, that takes away even that chaos, that there is that comfort that we don't have to, we don't have to claw or fight for placement. We're given that placement with who Christ is. And so, I don't know, that is what jumped out at me. And I don't know where we go from there. If that may be all over the place. I don't know if that's anything along the lines of what you were seeing. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, actually, Natalie, that was precisely the direction I wanted to go in. Um, I was just thinking about, uh, yeah, everything that you said, um, the, the, the recapitulation of the whole creation story. Mm -hmm. and, you know, as you were saying, God created everything. God created everything. He created everything good, and it was meant to be ordered. Um, and so I, I wonder, and here's maybe where um, my wrestling comes in, is that chaos continues to exist. And I think, uh, you know, in my own life, uh, I know that there are trials and challenges, but I don't necessarily think of it as chaotic. Right. Um, but I think there are times that probably any of us feel overwhelmed with things that are coming up um, and those difficulties that we face. And, and I think if, if God can uh, bring creation and order out of the chaos, and if, it's, uh, if we think of chaos as you know, cosmic, just right. confusion and all of these things, how much more capable would he be of addressing the, the issues in my own life. Right. Uh, the, the Mark passage that we read is one of my favorite passages of Jesus stills the storm. Um, 
and you know there's a there's a there's a whole backstory I have on it that I don't have time to tell but just an opportunity that I had to be in a place of seeming spiritual chaos mm -hmm. and and I read this passage uh, regularly over and over and then there was a confronting against uh, against what was going on where uh, there were people that were uh, legitimately um, angry mm -hmm. that I would dare to read something that Jesus is in control of the chaos and it was just like oh well isn't this fascinating it's like <laughs> rather than being um, rather than being in awe as the disciples were there were people that were legitimately angry at the idea that Jesus actually has authority over the wind and the waves and right. so um, you know so we think about it in terms of uh, you know natural creative things but we also need to think about it in terms of what's going on in, in human lives and the very spiritual reality that each and every one of us is daily offered a choice right. are we going to recognize who Jesus is are we going to be uh, filled with faith and unafraid Right. You know, here are the disciples that are just like, oh, right. Master, do you not care if we perish? And Jesus <laughs> right. is just like, he's asleep on the boat. And he's just like, dude, right. I, I got this all under control. And so many images of water and waves and creation. Whenever you think about boats and being asleep, you have to think about Jonah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to think about crossing the Red Sea. Uh, you have to think about um, other instances where Jesus is on the, the Sea of Galilee or in the water at his own baptism, mm -hmm. the Spirit being present, voice from heaven speaking, um, waves being calmed. It's, it's, it's all there. Uh, but if you know, the disciples knew the Psalms, you know, the disciples would know 130, 148, 32, 139. They would know there's nowhere they can go. Right. to leave the presence of God, but here's God who chose to be present with them. Right. Yeah. Um, it's been many years ago that I did um, a Bible study with the church um, when we were first married, so 20 years ago. Um, and one of the things that I remember very early on, and it said, you know, do you believe in God or do you leave God? Mm. And I think, you know, you're like to saying the disciples knew the Psalms, so they believed in, did they believe? Mm -hmm. And I, but I think that's a question. And, and as I did that Bible study, you know, that was something that really, that distinction really spoke to me. I mean, it's 20 years later and I still remember that. But I do think that there's a difference of uh, believing in God and believing what he tells us and believing right. what he offers us and that there is peace and protection there those things are offered in the chaos of life and mm -hmm. that he didn't create it to be chaotic he created it or do we believe that right. and can we rest in him can we believe that he has it that he has it and we don't have to take care of it and so mm. that's well and I know you uh, in, in what you stated at the beginning, you kind of touched on that Ephesians passage, and and you know we're I think every one of us could be good with an element of Ephesians chapter six all the way through nine. Maybe you know maybe I like this part, I don't like that part, whatever it might happen to be. You know even that whole idea of you know children obeying your parents, honoring your mother and father. Obviously going back to um, the uh, the fifth commandment. Uh, that then does have that promise that you it may be well with you. You may live long on the earth. That uh, that the initial family relationship of of mothers and fathers with their children, if that can be ordered well, mm -hmm. it leads to a better ordering of other things that would right. would happen. Uh, you know, and then we think about one well, if you've got a a, a family unit. And then we think about the, the family of God, the body of Christ, and, you know, the church. And we think about, do we, do, we re, do we relate to each other in similar ways? Do we honor and respect those who are older than us, who are wiser in the faith, more experienced in the faith? It does get into, you know, we don't, and we don't have time to explain 
uh, why Paul would write about slaves obeying your earthly masters. Um, but I think you hit on that, uh, uh, the important part that God does not show partiality, that, um, that master and slave are going to be treated according to how they treat each other in faith. Um, right. And I think that's true for us in community. I think it's true right. for us within our, uh, within our respective families um, and with our own children. And now that you know, my children are all adults and you've got some that are, you've got some <laughs> that are growing up. Adultish. Adultish and, and still growing. But, um, but how that even changes. Um, but, but this is where I'm, I'm really impressed with people who raise their, their families well, you know, and I, and I think about your own children and obviously I'm not in the house with them all of the time. <laughs> right. But, uh, but, you know, you and Billy, um, you know, investing in their spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, we all could do better. There's, we're, none of us are perfect in how we raise right. our children, you know, uh, but, but thinking about how do we not provoke our own children, how do we encourage them in the Lord? If they uh, sin against us, are we forgiving, uh, knowing that we sin against God all the time and God needs to forgive us? And so it's not that there are no consequences because the Psalms right. and Isaiah and all these things talk about what happens if you get into idolatry and stuff like that. But, um, you know, but the, 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 from the smallest family unit to the larger family unit, how are we encouraging each other and, and, and trusting each other into the care of the Lord? I think when we look at that family unit too, and, and I know I've said it here, I know I've said it in the sanctuary, and you and I have had this conversation, I think that there are so many incidences in, in, in Scripture, you know, we can't fully understand the relationship as humans that God has with us, and so he gives us these little snippets, and he gives us this parent-child, this marriage relationship, and it's that's just the closest thing that we have, that we have any um, capacity to grasp that little little bit of what he's trying to show us but in that family unit too you know you've got this honor but then this also this don't provoke and this this mutual respect and I think that the our individual family units there's so much that we could take from that and expand it to you mentioned the body the full body of Christ you know I look at my four kiddos and could they be any different? You know, they're so very different in trying to, um, you know, live that out daily, the in and out of the daily life with them and how you approach each one of them differently. I mean, you have to, they're different people, but yet still maintaining that cohesiveness of a family unit. And I think that, I think that we can figure that out in our homes sometimes. I think, not always. <laughs> Not always. Every family's got its challenges. <laughs> right. But I think that, I think if we were to look at that individual family unit and really, really work to take some of the good stuff that's happening in our homes and look at that in the larger body and in the context of the larger body of the church and, and the body of Christ, I think good things could happen. I mean, not that every family, like you said, every family has its issues, small, big, whatnot. But I think that that, you know, I don't know, maybe that's our practice. Mm. Maybe we mm. need to figure that out in our homes and then take it outside of our homes and expand that. I don't know. That's, I'll have to think about that some more. Just you said that and made me yeah. think that. So. Well, I think that's one of the uh, fun things about as we read, as we read regular uh, large chunks of scripture, mm -hmm. And, and again, see how you know, the Bible is, is presenting to us a, a cohesive whole message. It should impact every every area right. of our lives. Um, uh, you, know, I, you know, it's Psalm one thirty nine, the last psalm that we read today. It's a very familiar psalm, but it's something that um, is sometimes, I guess, maybe even easy to forget. Like if you're going through some really difficult times. Yeah. Um, do you always remember that there's there's nowhere you can go from God's presence, but it's always but it's for for those who have faith in Him, it's it, it's always a loving presence, um, even when there is discipline that God needs to have with us, right. because you know we know that the Lord disciplines those whom He loves. We know that from the Isaiah passage that. Um, 
those who are worshiping false gods, idols, the chaos, all that kind of stuff, that, that will be judged and, right. and the people of God will be restored. Um, and so there's that, it should provide us that interesting combination of, of, of being humble right. before the Lord um, and then praising God because of how, how good he is. But even those last couple of verses from Psalm 139, you know, I hate the wicked. I loathe those who, who do wrong and let them be cut off, let them be judged. Um, I think that's a very natural human reaction as well to very the injustices so. that come against us. Um, so just as Psalm 139 can give voice to people who are in the midst of struggle, and obviously the Mark passage where yeah. the disciples are terrified that they're going to get swamped and <laughs> excuse me and drowned in the boat, but God's right. present in both of those circumstances, and God has control over the chaos. Right. And 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 as you and and even you know, dare it be said, even uses sometimes chaos to draw us closer to Him that we would be more dependent. Right. Um, you know, He's not afraid of the wind and the waves. We're afraid of the wind and the waves, but he has authority and control over them. Right, Yeah. absolutely. Mm. Well, I think we, we, seem to, we seem to hit on those same themes. That's, a, that's always nice, isn't it? Right, it's yes. Like, yeah. And thank you for taking the lead on that. It's, yeah. uh, um, you know, there are some times that Natalie and I do actually review stuff ahead of time, but this was really a cold open. It was, right. um, this, uh, let's see what's, what's on, on the agenda for today. Well, um, thanks for joining us again. Sorry that we've missed the last couple of weeks. And uh, next week, uh, actually, Natalie and David and Morgan and I are all out. Well, at, no, uh, one more week. Is it one more week? Yeah, it's only the. Oh, that's today, right. We so leave on we'll the 29th. So hopefully, week. we can do this again next week. And yes. then there'll be a week off. I, I don't even know where I, I was like. I, I guess I'm getting excited about going to the national <laughs> gathering. That'll be fun. Right. Um, but I certainly hope that you guys would be willing to uh, come and worship with us on. Sunday morning, we do have a nine o'clock service and now at 1115 service and uh, um, whoever is preaching, I'll, I'll be preaching, but whoever preaches at both services will be preaching at both services, but I uh, would love to have you there. Are there any other, any other things that are coming um, up? Well, Sunday school is in between. Sunday school is in between, in between. The services, starting um, at 1015. Uh, we've got a few weeks, but we do have a family game night coming up. So Great. that's that's about a month out. So you'll be starting to get some details about that and information, but that's... The only thing I see. Okay, and yeah. and if you uh, are not local in San Angelo, and, and if you can only join us uh, via the technology side of things, we are grateful that you are watching and listening. If you do have comments, concerns, please do call the church, and we'd be happy to talk with you and to pray with you. Uh, and speaking of prayer, would you like to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your words to us today. Um, Thank you that you do have power and authority over all aspects of our lives. And I pray that um, in, in the chaos that we see, um, in the confusion sometimes that we face or the difficulties that we face, I pray that um, we do see you. We see your presence and that we can rest in you and we can be assured and trust um, that you you do have that power and authority and that you are present with us and that um, we can lay those burdens at your feet and that you do care for each and every one of us, um, that you did form each and every one of us in our mothers when you knew us before we existed. Uh, may we take comfort in that. And uh, may we offer you praise for your um, for your greatness and um, your holiness. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.